We are rolling, and we're back again with <laughs> Rachel and Dan Jensen. So we're gonna we're gonna kick things off uh, with Rachel. So Rachel, what do we want to talk about today? So I think today what we're gonna do we're gonna talk a little bit about um, monostructural uh, workouts. We're gonna talk a little bit about that versus just weightlifting, just running, just biking. Um, and then what functional fitness looks like and how we want to really focus on uh, a combination of all of them. So before you jump into it, mm -hmm. um, monostructural, whenever I got into CrossFit, I didn't know what they were talking about. They didn't, that really didn't, I didn't know what that means. So what is, what is monostructural? So when we think of monostructural, we're going to think of like, go out and do one movement and do it for a very for the most part, long amount of time. So whether like you're jump rope or yeah, jump roping, going out and running a 5k, running a 10k, um, getting on a salt bike and going for a hundred calories. Although some could argue that's fitness too, if you go hard enough, um, <laughs> stair stepper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, think of your traditional gold gym going into an elliptical, getting on the elliptical for 30 minutes and saying, okay, I did my cardio. Got it. Um, so that's, while there is a time and a place for that, um, and we'll kind of touch on that with Chris Henshaw's aerobic capacity, um, there's a lot more to learn from that other than just jumping in and just getting on the stair stepper for 30 minutes. Gotcha. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to start, we're going to kick it over to Dan, because he has a bit of a track and field and cross country background. So Dan, if you could hop in, tell us a little bit about that background and what your your fitness journey looks like now compared to what it looked like then. Yeah, so um, back through high school, I mean, I that was that was my uh, extracurricular. So track and cross country, depending on, you know, what season it was. I mean, if it was cross country season, uh, I mean, we would just go out for long distance runs. I mean, every day, some, you know, it might be just four or five. Sometimes it was 10. Uh, you know, meet days were actually my favorite days because that was only 5K. That was the, <laughs> that was the easy day. Um, but then when we, you know, we would get into to track season, uh, I primarily just did the 800. I mean, but we would still, we would do quarters. We would do a lot of interval um, exercises, you know, we'd just go out there, uh, do a quarter, 60 seconds of rest, another quarter, and probably do, you know, 10, 15 of those. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it just kind of varied by season, but it was, it was all running all the time. Do you remember thinking about anything in particular? I mean, were you strategizing or was it just kind of, okay, go run for a really long time and come back? Um, for, for track, I mean, again, at 800, it was, I'm going, you know, two laps. And I'm going as hard as I can. Um, but yeah, I mean, cross country season, yeah, I, you know, I would have to have to think about it. Cause you know, if you get out there that first mile and you just bang it out, then, um, you know, your second and third miles are, are you know, probably not so good. Um, and cross country, obviously, you know, it's an individual, but it's still a team sport. So, you know, I had to, had to make sure, you know, I was keeping my pace, um, which is kind of difficult, uh, you know, especially when you start off, there's a whole, whole bunch of people at the start and you're like, man, you know, I don't want to get too far ahead. I don't want to get too far in front. I, you know, we'll try to stay with the, stay with the pack. So definitely got had to keep the, that in mind. So do you run now, like outside of your time in the gym here? If so, like, what does that look like? Um... I mean, obviously, you know, I still have to, still in the Army, still got, you know, my two-mile run is still uh, still a thing. Um, so, you know, in the wintertime, uh, it's a little more difficult. I'm not a big treadmill fan. I, you know, I still got to get it in, though. Um, I definitely enjoy uh, outdoor running more. Um, and where I'm at, we kind of have a nice um, uh, loop or whatever uh, that's about a mile long, got some hills in it. Uh, as well so um yeah when, as it starts to get a little bit warmer i'll try you know get back out there try to do two to three times a week on on running but i'm still i'm not going you know those four or five mm -hmm. anymore i did do the army 10 miler uh last october which that was uh an eye opener i hadn't really done that distance in a long time and it uh kind of whooped me but <laughs> yeah not too much uh long long distance running anymore so, Bob, you've uh, worked with Chris Henshaw before in his aerobic capacity. He's been here once. He's coming back late April this year, I believe. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what his approach is on, on monostructural work and, and the longer track workouts, but also, you know, how he – you might be getting the same amount of miles in, the same amount of meters in, but you're breaking them up differently and approaching it differently than you would. Yeah, Chris is great. He has a lot of great stories to tell, both from his uh, – triathlon days uh, where he's really working on the endurance and to his first uh, first days uh, going out and finding CrossFit 
Uh, and, uh, and then uh, after rebuilding himself from all of those many, many, many miles and neglecting a number of muscle groups, he was able to find, uh, find the CrossFit and working with, uh, working with CrossFit to start to build up those muscle groups, which otherwise were being neglected. Uh, so uh, that was definitely a part of Chris's story. Uh, what he brings to uh, CrossFit that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of CrossFit athletes, folks doing CrossFit, maybe aren't thinking of, uh, is more of a uh, uh, trying to maximize your results in the workout. And just like Dan was saying, if you go out too hard on that first mile, that your second mile and your third mile won't be as good. So when you look at a CrossFit workout, let's say it's a three-round workout, and you go out really hot in the first round, you are not likely to do as well in round two and round three. And, uh, and so that does, not, uh, that does not bode well. It also does not uh, help you to maximize your results. So he's bringing a lot of that uh, long, hard-earned science of actually uh, being out there doing the work and uh, bringing it to CrossFit and helping CrossFit Games athletes to properly pace themselves and prepare for competition. So I'm reading your aerobic capacity shirt right now. This is Build Your Engine. Um, so what's your take or the Chris Henshaw take on what building your engine looks like um, in both a monostructural sense, but then also a functional fitness sense? Yeah, so uh, the... Um, Everyone, whether you are uh, a competitor CrossFit or a recreational CrossFit athlete, which um, I neglected to mention that, uh, you know, as Chris is working with the, um, the CrossFit Games athlete, he is also out there teaching many, many courses to the recreational athletes, uh, you know, such as myself, where we're just having fun. We're trying to get the best workout we can, uh, living for health and wellness and longevity. Building, building your engine um, at, the, at the top level really, uh, in some sense, is about... Um, increasing your aerobic capacity to be able to do more work. Going back to the early days with Greg Glassman, and we look at improving our fitness, improving our health. We're really looking at improving our work capacity. So if we are, um, if if some part of our uh, energy systems are lacking, let's say we just haven't had any aerobic exercise in our diet. Uh, then uh, when we go out there for that first workout, we're really going to be uh, struggling to get that oxygen into our system to be able to deliver to muscles and be able to actually do useful work. Uh, I look back on uh, when I started uh, going to the gym for the first time, uh, which was like 30 years ago. And um, my goal was to just be able to stay on the treadmill for 10 minutes. So it was, it was a labor just to be able to get that in. Uh, then, the, then the conversation after eventually building that back up again was, um, do you do your cardio first? Do you do your strength training second and stuff like that? Um, just touching a little bit also on the other, other systems, uh, muscle mass and being able to, um, to clear blood lactate from your bloodstream using, using those big muscles uh, to do that uh, means that you're trained to be able to recover while you're working as well, which can be a big part of it. So there's a lot of those little pieces that are going into it, uh, but you really could just boil it down to is, you know, you, you need to be taking care of the whole body. You need to make sure we don't neglect any muscle groups and that we are getting uh, aerobic exercise in our diet. Awesome. So let's take Tan, uh, Dan's case example here. Um, in the army, has to run for your, your combat fitness test. Um, but recently, we know the Army has changed its fitness test. Um, it's become more of a f functional fitness test. Um, so for, for someone like Dan in that situation, um, would you recommend focusing primarily on running? Or would you say, you know, we're, we're prepping for an, an Army combat fitness test and, okay, but let's just keep doing functional fitness. Let's do what we're normally doing in the gym, you know, four or five days a week, adding a little bit more running in there. Um, Bob, I'm curious what your take is. And then Dan, curious how you would prepare now for our, an Army Combat Fitness test <laughs> um, now that you have CrossFit and some functional fitness in your life. Yeah, definitely. I was going to, I was almost going to toss it over to Dan uh, and, and get his, his take on it a little bit because uh, you've seen the different tests that are in there. Plus, you've had years of uh, doing the uh, APFT. Mm -hmm. So, looking at the Army Combat Fitness test, Dan, what is in it that makes it different? <laughs> what, what do you. Yeah, so the old, you know, the old PT test, two minutes push-ups, two minutes sit-ups, two mile run. I mean, with that, the best way to do push-ups is push-ups. The best way to, to practice your sit-ups is, 
in sit-ups that's and cool. then obviously running so that's how i would prepare i would just do a lot of push-ups a lot of sit-ups and a lot of running um but for now you know with the new events I, you know i still have the push-ups but a hand release push-up is is to me totally it's you know totally it feels totally different um you know the 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 knee tuck um the the um overhead ball throw the spring drag carry and then you know the the deadlift so you know those are i mean obviously you still got to do them but i feel like um there's you don't just have to do you know i don't just have to go to a hex bar and do deadlifts to practice a deadlift um so i mean you know obviously i still got to run um but it's different now because you're doing the other events first and then you're doing the run so obviously instead of you know, push up setups, run, you're doing more events and then running. So still having to learn, okay, if I gas myself out on my three rep max deadlift, um, you know, and my other, you know, my sprint drag carry, am I even going to have anything left for my two mile run? So it's learning how to, um, you know, have peak performance on those events, but still have to be able to, okay, I got like six events now instead of, instead of three. So, um, I feel like that's more in the back of my mind now, you know, pacing, proper pacing. All right. So now that you're in here, you're doing, you know, constantly varied, high intensity, functional fitness. Um, you know, we do all kinds of different workouts. We do three minute burners. We do 30 minute long, you know, grunt work style workouts. We do some where you have to strategize more or some that you just have to, you know, put the fire to the wall and just go. Um, what have you learned in here mentally that you'll take into your army combat fitness test? Like you said, you can't go you know, maximize everything that you do in your first event and then not have anything left for your run at the end. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, just like that. Yeah. If I, if I know, uh, like yesterday, you know, we had three, three minute AMRAPs, you know, I'm going, I'm going three minutes. I'm going, I'm going hard. Cause then, you know, we had that, that three minute rest, um, built in. I mean, obviously between my events, I'm going to ha still have some rest, but it's, it's different as opposed to, you know, what we just did here, the 20 minute with the team to where, you know, I could do a, a short little sprint, if you will, and then and then pass on to my partner and then and, and go. Um, but I feel like still coming out here, I'm still I still feel like I'm getting cardio in without you know hitting a treadmill, if that if that makes sense. Um, so even though I'm not like doing uh, like going out on a run, I still feel like I'm getting that aerobic workout in. So that leads me to a great point. Um, so personal story, I get a lot of times when people look at me and they're like, oh, you're fit. How much do you run every day? <laughs> and my typical response is to actually laugh out loud and say, as little as possible. <laughs> exactly. I don't run, um, unless it's programmed for me. And even then, you know, I, I'm fighting that mental battle of, oh, do I really have to run today? I usually joke that I have one pace that's slow, um, but I, I have gotten into arguments with people where they're like, well, you're fit, so you have to run. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, you don't have to run to be, I mean, running is good. We like monostructural work. It is, it does have a place, but you don't have to just run to be fit. And I think that's something that we're really trying to change um, in this functional fitness culture. And Dan, you just touched on it, which brought the thought to my head was, you know, it doesn't have to be just go to a gym, spend 30 minutes on an elliptical do your, you know, three sets of 10 and then be done. You know, there's so much more of a, an effective workout that you could get. Um, I mean, in three minutes of Fran. Yeah, there's uh, so many good things in there that uh, I want to touch briefly on the three minute intervals that, uh, that Dan talked about in the workout the other day. When we're, when we're doing a workout that has a three minute time interval, what we're, our training and our in intent develops capacity uh, in that three minute interval. Uh, the sprint drag carry, if you finish that event in three minutes or faster, you score enough points, 60 points, I think it is, mm -hmm. uh, at whatever level you're at, uh, to, to be able to pass. So, you know, you've got to be training with intent in there. Um, on, the, on, on the running and, you know, those long, run, uh, long runs, I know the, my, my wife encouraged me to get out on, on what was going to be my first run I said, well, how far are we going? And she said, well, we're going five miles. We're basically going to run down to the mall, turn around and come back. 
and uh, it was an awful experience. Um, I just <laughs> didn't, I didn't know how to run. I didn't have proper technique for sure. Um, and I uh, had no concept of, of pace and whatever. The only gear that I had at that point was awful. So it was either n not awful, which was not running or running and it was awful. So I pretty much did not enjoy running up until the point that uh, we uh, was had a chance to go to Chris's uh, Chris's course up in CrossFit Reebok One, and um, and he has a program where you know you're working to improve your lactic threshold, basically where you can improve your ability to clear that blood lactate to be able to um, to recover as you're running. And so that pace uh, was, was new to me. I had no idea what my, you know, what that pace was going to feel like. It felt so much better. I was able to run so much better. And so his training program really has people working in and around uh, that, uh, that uh, time domain or in, in there to work on that uh, improvement. So you don't have to run, uh, you know, like five miles, 10 miles, 15 miles. I know I've just upset all of our marathon runners <laughs> because the only way to run a marathon is to build up those distances for sure. Um, but what, uh, what, what I learned from Chris was actually finding that pace and then developing those different gears that you would run out to use for your one mile event, your two mile event, uh, or your 5k and so on. And I, th I'm not sure that, um, that, you know, a lot of folks who are just starting out or maybe they're facing that army combat fitness test, where you have that same two mile run that's in there, but Dan, would you say that uh, pacing is how important is pacing to your two mile run uh, to get your best time on that? You think, and does that change with the Army Combat Fitness Test? Yeah, I mean it. It does now. I mean, we you get more time. Uh, the, the standards have have changed. Um, you know, you, you get more time to complete it now. But again, you know, and especially like I always hated after you know on the APFT right so. I just did two minutes of sit-ups and so, and then I would go run and I it would immediately start feeling it in my hip flexors. Like, yeah. so it was always uncomfortable. Um, but then I felt, you know, like I can push it a little bit harder, but again, now more events, um, you know, and, and it's also, I think learning where your weakness maybe is, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, doing 300 pounds on my, on my, on my deadlift. So, um, it's also understanding, okay, this event, maybe, maybe I'm not so good at my leg tucks. So I'm doing what I can, but I'm not like overexerting myself to then be able to, yeah, like I still got to do my two miles. So it's, it's also, I think, learning yourself and learning where I can uh, be stronger in what event, what right, event, right, maybe right. not to overexert myself oh nice that, so i was thinking like just pacing on the run but you brought yeah. up an ex excellent point of like looking at the whole competition the set of tests or events that you're going to do and so, so, quote unquote and pacing yourself appropriately through those so that you can maximize your results love it right yeah just disclaimer we are not saying that just running is bad <laughs> we do know that there's a place for just running or just sure. biking um but that kind of mean, leads me to another thought. Uh, one of the famous buzz sayings in CrossFit is, you know, CrossFit is preparing you to be not necessarily great at one thing, um, but we would like to have a CrossFitter walk into any type of um, domain, modality, and be able to, to be average, at least average um, at it. So do either of you have a story of when you were – maybe thrown into an uncomfortable situation, something you weren't really expecting to use, but you're able to use your fitness because, you know, you do it in here and, and you're able to take the skills that you use in here and, and apply it to that situation, whether it's athletic, physical, you know, mental, anything. I can help out a little sure, bit. Yeah. Um, the, maybe not to talk so much about an individual story that I have, but I just know that in life, Things don't always go your way. So yeah, I can imagine, you know, the first event for the three rep max deadlifts, mm -hmm. uh, you train, you kind of know where, where you're going with it and you get there to the event and something goes wrong. You know, maybe, uh, maybe you get uh, a no rep on a movement or something like that. And uh, by practicing your, your CrossFit, you kind of know you're used to a little bit of adversity. You brush it off, you knock off the dust, you get back in there and you do what you trained to do. Uh, and something like that could uh, present itself uh, during event day or even out in life as well, where uh, you're faced with some sort of adversity and you can overcome that based on just some of the tough hard work that you've done in the gym training. 
Um, sorry. <laughs> that, no, you're good. I'm throwing things out there. Um, Dan, what's the biggest three three biggest pieces of advice that you would give? Um, a to somebody new walking into a CrossFit gym, um, and B somebody who may not have experienced CrossFit and is preparing for the Army Combat Fitness Test. Okay, um, so you know, I'm only about four months into mm-hmm. into CrossFit, and and um, so when I first came in here, uh, for one, I kind of you know quote unquote checked my ego at the door, sort of a thing, because I mean, I, you know, there's people obviously you know that are able to do some of these workouts really fast, put up put up a lot of weight and I'm just not, and I'm just not there. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to compare myself to anybody. I'm, I'm here to, to, to push myself, um, and to, um, you know, keep an open mind, be willing to be coached. Cause a lot of these movements, you know, I've never, I've never done them before. And I'm, you know, obviously I'm not trying to hurt myself. So being able to, to, to be coached and understand, Hey, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing, but there are people that are here that do know, what they're doing. Um, and then I would say the third one is to, you know, is to push yourself. It's something different every day. That's what I like about coming here, you know, as opposed to, you know, I go to a standard gym. Okay, here, I'm going to do some bench press. I'm going to do some bicep curls. You know, I, I felt like I was doing the same thing all the time. Uh, and here I haven't had the same workout twice yet. So, um, I come in here, it's something new every day. And that, and that's the enjoyable part. For, for me as well, for what, you know, I don't have to think about it. And to, um, I'm able to do something different every day. Yeah. I was just thinking of a story, uh, Rachel, where my wife and I had decided to replace the front porch. Uh, and it, um, the house was built in 1946 uh, when we moved into it in uh, the late 90s or 2000s, something like that. We, uh, the porch needed some repairs. So we decided to just remove all the brick and then, uh, basically pour some concrete in there so loaded a bunch of rebar and stuff like that to reinforce it probably about three times as much iron and steel that you needed for the size porch we were creating it was you know maybe four feet by six feet or something like that we mixed up the uh the concrete in one of the cement mixers and we had a ramp going up to the top of the forms and for whatever reason i hadn't hadn't imagined how heavy that thing was going to be to actually get it up the ramp so uh so it was time to pour it. I mean, you can't have, let the cement sit there. You can't, we're not going to take a Dixie cup and start pouring the concrete <laughs> in there. So I was like, well, okay. You know, Dan talks about checking his ego at the door, and uh, I, I, I didn't, right? So I was just going to grab this thing, and I was just going to push it up the um, push it up the ramp. So I basically we had eight, eight foot long, bro- eight or ten foot long boards. I got up about two thirds of the way, and I think started going backwards. Oh, no. And you're like, oh, what no. is what is going to go on? Oh, so. No. Um, talk about core strength or whatever. And, uh, you know, at, at that point, you know, when, when you practice uh, CrossFit, you get to a point where you have to decide, am I going to complete uh, that repetition or am I going to, uh, you know, basically uh, come back uh, another day and try maybe and stuff like that. So, um, so I think I called my wife for help and she helped me push it up. I think that's how we finished that one. So that's my story. I like Sticking it. Sticking with it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it brings up an interesting point, though. You said, you know, you instantly relied on that technique um, and your core strength. Uh, and I think that's something really important that we build in here is really emphasizing that form and that technique and creating that muscle memory both mentally and physically. So that, that really touches on both points of your story there is that you know, it, it started rolling back down. You're like, yeah, well, oops. you know, yeah. <laughs> But you, but you relied on on the lessons that you've learned and the struggles that you faced and the okay, well, just you know, one more rep or whatever it is, both mentally, but then also your physical muscle memory of, okay, brace your core, be yeah, strong here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right, knees are collapsing in, and you know, back is all rounded. <laughs> yeah, you're sitting there thinking, oh man, a coach would not be happy if they saw my form right now. <laughs> I mean, it's it's one of those moments where you go, oh crap, things things aren't going to go well here. <laughs> When you yeah. can't bail on it either, that's yeah. concrete. You got to. You're like, you gotta, you oh man, this thing's starting to go it. back. I think I just made a mistake, right? right? Yeah. yeah, but CrossFit too. I mean, just uh, having a community and stuff like that. Uh, I, you know, I, we do partner workouts and team workouts and things like that. 
um, you know, it's you you quickly learn like, you know, you're not doing fifty reps. You got another another person working with you, you're gonna split up the work and, and work together to get it. And when you feel like you can't do any more and you know your partner's there cheering you on, you can find your way to do one or two more reps and things like that. So uh one plus one is more than two. Absolutely. I think that was really um I think one of my favorite things about partner workouts is you know, I know a lot of times people are like, okay, well, we're going to split this up exactly this many reps and this many reps, and that's what we're going to do from, we'll take today as example, now through the end of the 20-minute AMRAP. And I'm like, or you could just talk to each other, and when you're starting to fall off, let each other know, and then switch. Um, so I love that, that strategic communication part of both partner workouts and team workouts. Um, and like you said, Bob, it really p- pushes you to where, you know, you, you're – pushing you're keeping that intensity high when you feel that intensity start to break you know you can hop off and let someone else go but that just means your intensity has to be that high again when you get back on it as opposed to maybe if you're in an individual workout and you're like okay well you know now I I do need to scale it back a little bit so I don't just completely burn out um yeah Yeah, fun times Mm -hmm. um so one more question for you real quick Dan Mm because I'm curious uh there's been a lot of well in YouTube Bob there's been a lot of controversy, discussion, over the change to the Army Combat Fitness Test. Um, you know, I know in here, we do a lot of these movements every single day. Like, mm. these are not uncommon. They're not unfamiliar with movements. Um, do either of you have any thoughts or opinions or responses to any of the discussion regarding the that the Army Combat Fitness Test might be too dangerous or doesn't allow for proper technique or so on? Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to check my <laughs> words carefully here. Um, this does not respect, <laughs> represent any official yeah, view. Right. So, I mean, obviously with anything, you have to practice it. If you just roll up to a PT field and come up to a deadlift bar, throw some weight on there and, and try to yank it up. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to go well. Right. So, you know, you have to take, you have to practice, but, um, I feel like some of these moves, I mean, any, you don't need equipment to practice a hand release push up. Um, you can, you can find, I think, you know, a bar, you know, and in some form or fashion to do some leg tucks. Um, you can find some type of ball to try to throw it over your head. Um, obviously, you know, a deadlift, you got it. You, you, you need some equipment, you know, a, a slug drag carry, you, you need some equipment. So, I understand uh, you kind of both sides. There's challenges there in, in, you know, some, um, you know, especially when you get into like uh, National Guard, reserve soldiers that, you know, maybe don't have necessarily the means to, to come out and, and spend the money on, on, a, on a gym membership. I mean, it, it can be tough. I understand that. Um, but I'm a firm believer. So there's three uh, learning domains. There's institutional, there's um, you know, like, a, if you will, like a on the job, like um, functional, um, but then there's self-development. Uh, and I've, you know, my personal opinion, like self-development, I think is probably the most important of the three. Um, Cause you, you just got to find a way, um, you know, d- given your circumstances to, to find, to find a way to try to, to try to get it, to get it done. Yeah, I want to build on the the, the self learning aspect of it. Uh, if you go back to the early roots of CrossFit, uh, that was public domain. So the CrossFit uh, website, the uh, the CrossFit Journal, there are so much, so many articles that are out there. Go go to the CrossFit uh, webpage today and get started on if you haven't already reading and learning and educating. Because uh, when we look at like Dan said, you know, pulling weight from the ground with a deadlift is you know you may not have that equipment but there is there's a way Mm -hmm. and if we let ourselves just like um you know things are changed and and you just put your hands up and i can't do this uh then yeah it's not going to happen and you know there might be folks that are in situations where uh they're not necessarily getting the 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 training or the time on the ground because because of resource equipment uh issues and things like that um so i would say you know get out there and start doing some learning. Uh, if you are fortunate enough to, uh, to know someone, uh, either a personal trainer or something like that, starting trying to incorporate some uh, 
weightlifting into your uh, into your workouts. Try to incorporate some sprint speed uh, workouts, interval style workouts into your workout. Yeah, there's a lot of workouts. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, so there's just a lot of good information from the early days of CrossFit and even today they're keeping it up that you can uh, really build those foundations and uh, start building a, a base of strength to build on um, some later capability. Wonderful. I think we're going to go ahead and call it there. Dan, thanks for joining yeah, thanks. us. Bob, Thank thanks you. as always. Um, and of course, you know, if anyone has any ideas or just discussions or topics that you want us to, to touch on please let us know reach out to bob and we'll see y'all next week bye now all right